I'm Chuck Bailey, a geology professor at the College of William & Mary. I study rocks that have been deformed and oftentimes metamorphosed. One of the things I want William & Mary geology students to be able to do is recognize deformed and metamorphosed rocks and the differences between those things. So I asked my structural geology class to tell me a little bit about this rock, identify what it was, and discuss the metamorphic and deformation history that it experienced. So let's see how they did. Yeah, this is a um, metamorphosed sedimentary rock. I'm thinking a quartzite. Uh, and the linear features I'm thinking are scolithosporos. See, at first you think it looks like a quartzite, but then uh, you notice these little circular fellows right here, and to me that looks a little bit like scolithos or like worm tubes, which is a primary structure. Um, so that would mean that this is indeed not a metamorphic quartzite. It seems to be a sedimentary sandstone. I said that this one is a metamorphic rock. It's a quartzite. Um, it looks like it's been uh, metamorphosed because the scolithos don't look like they're perfect circles. I thought it was a metamorphic rock and probably quartzite or some, something like that because um, like you can't really see individual grains, but it has the look of quartz. And I'm gonna go with sandstone instead of quartzite because there are times where you can still see the sand grains. So which is it? Well, let's look at the texture of the rock. This one's tricky because there isn't a whole lot of cement between the grains, but you can definitely still see quartz grains, especially with a hand lens. Let's take a look at the rock in thin section. Sure enough, the grains still have distinct boundaries, and in places you can see the cement holding the rock together. This is a sedimentary rock. These are scolithos burrows. Way back when this rock was still sediment in the ocean, little wormy critters burrowed tubes in the sand. These burrows have been preserved in the rock as trace fossils, and we generally assume that they were originally round at the top. If the rock gets deformed, then the burrows end up looking more elliptical. We can think about these worm burrows as, in essence, cylindrical pipes that are actually in the rock. In their undeformed state, we might envision that they would have a circular cross-section when you look parallel to their long axis. But what if we don't look parallel to their long axis? Take a look at this. Now that I've chopped through this tube, you'll see in an oblique view, it looks very elliptical, but it's still circular. On this rock, some of the tubes look like they've been strained quite a bit, but it's an illusion. We are observing these tubes at an angle, and if we look at the top of the tubes, they're actually still pretty round. Okay, let's summarize what we've learned. First, deformation really is a change in the shape of a material. Whereas metamorphism represents uh, really a wholesale recrystallization, oftentimes there's chemical change involved. If we want to step back and think about this, uh, the sample in front of us here still preserves original structures like these trace fossils. If you look closely at it, the original sedimentary quartz grains are cemented together but not recrystallized. So I would argue that this is in fact a sedimentary rock. It's experienced some degree of deformation, but it really hasn't enjoyed any metamorphism. So remember, rock stars, don't diss deformation and never mock metamorphism.